In the last video, we saw how to construct the MO diagram for the simplest diatomic molecule, H2. The textbook discusses how to construct MO diagrams for other diatomics, like N2, O2, NO, CO, and so on. While you can learn a lot about the properties of diatomic molecules from this analysis, we're going to skip past them because the molecules we will mostly encounter are polyatomic. They have three or more atoms. In order to construct MO diagrams for polyatomic molecules, we start from Lewis structures. From there, we determine geometries. And then, based on the geometries, we assign hybridizations to every atom except hydrogen. The hybridizations let us know what atomic orbitals each atom brings to the table. Then, we see how the atomic orbitals overlap with one another to make bonding and antibonding orbitals. We may also encounter orbitals that don't overlap with others. These end up as non-bonding orbitals. Finally, we fill up the molecular orbitals with the total number of valence electrons available. Let's see how this works for a simple organic molecule, methane, CH4. From Chem 150, you know that the Lewis structure of methane has a central carbon with four hydrogen atoms bonded to it. We know that the carbon has four electron groups surrounding it, so it has a tetrahedral geometry. The geometry tells us that the carbon atom is sp3 hybridized. This hybridization means that the carbon atom brings four sp3 hybrid orbitals along with it, each pointed toward a hydrogen atom. Each of the hydrogen atoms has a 1s orbital. So each of the carbon sp3 orbitals interacts with a hydrogen 1s orbital to make sigma bonding orbital and a corresponding antibonding orbital. Finally, we fill the new molecular orbitals with electrons. Since carbon has four valence electrons and each hydrogen has one, we fill the diagram with eight total electrons. All the bonding orbitals are full, and none of the antibonding orbitals have electrons in them. Let's look at the MO diagram of a slightly more complicated molecule, which will let us see some additional stuff. Diazine is N2H2, and its Lewis structure looks like this. It has an NN double bond, one hydrogen on each nitrogen, and a lone pair on each nitrogen. First, we need to identify the hybridization of the nitrogen atoms. Since each has three electron groups, a lone pair, a hydrogen, and the other nitrogen, they are sp2 hybridized. This means that each nitrogen atom has three separate sp2 hybrid orbitals and one leftover or unhybridized p orbital. One of the hybrid orbitals from each nitrogen points at the other one making new sigma bonding and antibonding orbitals between the nitrogens. Another set of sp2 hybrid orbitals point toward the hydrogen atoms, overlapping with their 1s orbitals and making two NH sigma bonds and the corresponding antibonding orbitals. The remaining hybrid orbitals don't point at other atoms, so they stay put as non-bonding orbitals. Finally, we have those unhybridized p orbitals. We know that they're perpendicular to the hybrid orbitals, so they're both sticking above and below the plane of the molecule. Since they are parallel to each other and overlap side to side, they make a pi bond, which has a corresponding pi star orbital. Now that we've accounted for all the individual atomic orbitals, our MO diagram is complete and we just need to fill it with electrons. Five from each nitrogen, plus two from hydrogen, for 12 total. We fill the lowest, we fill starting from the lowest energy orbital upward. So we start with the sigma bonding orbitals, then pi bonding, then non-bonding, until we've used all 12 electrons. We can see that we've filled two NH bonds, one NN sigma bond, one NN pi bond, and two non-bonding sp2 hybrid orbitals on nitrogen. Those are the lone pairs. Again, the antibonding orbitals are not populated. 
most of the time, antibonding orbitals aren't populated in stable molecules. They don't get much use until we start doing chemical reactions, and that's a topic for another day. There's a fun shortcut available once you're comfortable building MO diagrams from scratch. If you know a Lewis structure, you can simply count up the numbers and types of bonds and lone pairs and place them at the appropriate energies, and finally fill with electrons. That's the topic of the next video. I should note, the way we've constructed MO diagrams here using hybridization is a little bit of a shortcut, and some chemists would object to the way we've done it. It actually does give incorrect MO diagrams from time to time, but since we'll be focusing on applications of MO theory to organic reactions, it's not necessary to go into all the extra analysis required to get rigorously correct MO diagrams every time. The shortcut gives us the information we need.